Hey, Manuel here, and today I want to show you relative coordinates with drones and how to do that and what's up with it. So, I've programmed a drone and I'm going to put a shove on this chest and the drone will grab it and it will go over here and will dig. This doesn't look that special. Though, if you look at the pattern at what it's digging, it's kind of interesting. It's not a pattern a drone usually would dig at. It would dig from top to bottom, or the closest blocks so would look a bit random. But not in slices like these. Now, if I do this, he won't get back. But when he get at this point, this, this last layer, he will return and we'll do the cycle again and he will if you look at the indicator of the entity tracker you'll see that he cycles through all slices basically and when he finds something on his path he will dig it so next cycle there we go and he'll dig it and this is all due to relative coordinates basically what's going on is we select a block here and we select a block here and we let him dig and when he finished digging when he finishes digging I'll increase the coordinates of both blocks by one the Z uh, coordinate and actually it goes to minus Z so we decrease the Z coordinate by one both coordinates of the area and then we move on we dig again and again we move on and here it actually has a condition and it checks if the Z coordinate has a certain value and if that's the case it will reset and get back over here. Now we could remove this condition and we will have a infinite digging machine. Let's just uh, do that. Don't pay too much attention to the code just yet. We'll just remove this. Put this back in here. Put the drone in. Reset it and give him a shovel again put it back down and you'll see he's checking and now he will go beyond that and he goes back and he will start to dig now this is all kept in a uh, variable internally in the drone and the nice thing about this variable is that it will be remembered when you restart the world so if I put these blocks here and maybe it's starting and we log out of the world and we go back you'll notice he does keep on digging at the place where he used to be and this is useful if you set up a drone to infinitely dig like here and he's over here and the server gets res reset it will have to search all those blocks he has dig uh, his deck before uh, so that they will take a bit and with this you can uh, well you can save that uh, you need to keep something in mind while programming it uh, you need to be careful to not initialize the variables but just use the variables stored in memory but we'll get over that right now I'm thinking of just showing you how to do it so if we just grab a programmer in the program we've got a few new pieces for example you have the coordinates so the area stores two uh, coordinates uh, for example this one and that one and with these two you can define all sorts of areas the coordinate is just uh, three values well, x y and z or one value actually and uh, one coordinate and you can just select one from a GPS, so you can do that, or you can type it in manually. Um, actual numbers, um, or you can get it from a variable, and um, we'll get into that in a second. So let's, for example, grab this and that, and let, let's make this one go two into the ground uh, whoops like that and this one can go there so let's grab these with the 
coordinates and we also need this one and we grab the second and when we start up the program we want to set a variable with that with that coordinate so we can do that by doing this coordinate operation no coordinate operator and basically this allows you to do all kinds of math functions with the coordinate operator or with coordinates you can increase values by one or you can just well overload it you can basically grab a coordinate put it here and we can give it a name first and basically what will happen right now is this value this XYZ will put into this variable and this plus minus uh, will get into that later so we want to do the same for the other coordinate and we just call it second and we can now just to show you how this works we can do a dig and we're going to dig in a area and this UI has changed you used to do just that and that will work fine uh, and you'll see in the tooltip it will just show you the area I selected but we are going to make it more dynamic we are going to do first and second so you put the variable names in here and now that will work if we put in a drone and we make a dig you notice it will dig at the area we select with these variables so we put this corner in the first variable we put this corner in the second variable and this variable is those variables are used in here now it's done so now for making it increase so what we can do is we can do a jump um, a white piece other white piece we can jump to a, a another area we're going to jump to this place um, we're going to jump to the main let's copy it over so when we're done initializing we're going to jump to, jump to main we're going to dig at the area and afterwards we want to increase the coordinates by one or both coordinates actually both variables we want to increase the z value or the decrease the z value actually so we're going to use this one again and we're going to modify the first first variable and we're going to grab what's currently in that variable so we're going to do this so we're not going to use a constant value from a GPS or just a constant we're going to grab the variable so what's in the var variable at, at the moment so that would be for first would be minus six nine four blah blah minus four one one and we want to decrease one so we just grab a coordinate and we type minus one in here so that's what this coordinate operator is doing with the plus and minus what it allows you to do it it allows you to when pieces are placed on the right it will add it will add them up and at the left it will subtract them from the right basically it's basically the same with whitelisting and blacklisting a little bit different but the same with this one and you can also put it in multiply divide mode and that will uh, multiply all right hand side coordinates and divide by the left hand side and now you can do a uh, divide by zero <laughs> so the result of that operation will be put in the variable name and we did that right here basically we are getting the coordinates zero 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 and we're adding this with that and putting that in the first variable so let's do the same with the second second so we're subtracting one what we also could have done is do this and just put in one that also would have worked actually but let's just do this 
but uh, just as we uh, FYI, you can do that. So after we've done this, we want to jump back to this main. We won't want to program to end here because then it will jump back and it will re be reset again. So it flows from top to bottom like always. So we want to jump to main again. Actually this should do it for what we want to do. There we go, so it finished the first slice. And when it's done, when it's done digging, uh, this it will jump to this one, it will increase or decrease actually the coordinates, the Z coordinate one one, both the Z coordinates, and it will jump back to main and do it again. And this will go on infinitely. Uh, there's a problem with this program though. If we log out and log back in, you don't get that behavior I explained that it will remember. Um, so how does that work? Um, or what causes that? And that's because when you reload the world it will always start out at the start piece. So actually before, well it, it starts at the start piece and then it will just put the, the starting coordinates in this in these variables so what we want to do is we want to actually check if the coordinate is uh, well totally reset so uh, zero 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 that's the that's the value at which coordinates always start at and if that's the case then we want to set the variables and else we just want to jump to the main right away so what we can do we've uh, we've ha we've got a new condition piece, the condition coordinates, and what we can do with this, we can well check the the values of a coordinate, and not the uh, the entire coordinate. You also can just check for just the z value, or the x and the y and the z, or whatever. So you've got two input coordinates. You can put in. So we are going to put in, oh, what? We're just going to put in 000. And we're going to check if 000, or we're going to check if the first variable equals 000. And if that's the case, then we just put down the drone. We didn't reload the world. So we want to go initialize the variables when we do so. Um, and we want to use another of that and we're going to call this init variables and when the condition is true when the, fir uh, the variable called first equals zero 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 then we want to jump to init variables so oh, and I want to make sure that I'm checking these and putting them to equals. So this means that if the x, both x values are equal, both y values are equal, and both the z values are equal, then this condition uh, is evaluated true. And you can see this right here as well. So if we uncheck the z value, you'll see the condition will be if x1 equals x2 and y1 equals y2. We want both, uh, all three. Well, just one would also work because there's only one row in the entire world where the x value will be zero, but this is just uh, a nicer way to do it. So when the, f first, the variable called first equals zero, 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 then we jump to initialize variables. And if not, we're going to jump to main. So you can see this in here. And when we are done, well, this basically is the program. Hello there, you're doing a fine job, I see. And okay, it's doing its job. It starts at a certain corner. We put back the 
grass and when we reload the world I expect to see the fire drone come back because that still didn't have the updated program and this one will continue. So this one continues, this one comes back, so that's exactly how I expected it to behave. And as for the stopping when it ends and it reaches this point, that's just a matter of adding another condition. So we can do this, we can put this one in here. So after we dig, we check if it reached the Z uh, coordinate it reaches a certain value and then we return. So we can do it right there. The X and the Y value doesn't really matter. Don't really matter at that point, but so that's why I'm not really bothering too much. So let's select the I selected it with the right GPS tool. So let's select the right GPS tool and we're going to check if the first variable or the second they should have the same z value so that's why you can just check one so we check if the first uh, the variable called first has a z value of minus 420 as defined by the gps tool in here so if the first variable is somewhere in this line then this one this condition evaluates true and if that's the case we want to go to init variables so we're going to reset we're going to start again at here and then we do this whole cycle again and if it's false it will continue and increase the variable or decrease it and we'll jump back over here so let's test that again uh, let's also make sure to kill the drones so we're going to put down the drone and you'll see it just does what it should do and when we reach at this point it will go back <laughs> So this is this is my explanation about how conditions are or how coordinates are working and how you can do relative coordinates. So I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to the next release. And this was my Martin. Bye. -a.